a few years, Jesus was walking around the countryside, sharing his wisdom with the masses. He made some enemies, and they did everything they could to smear him. There seems to have been one specific piece of false information that he had to lay to rest whenever he got the chance. Apparently, his critics or enemies were spreading the rumor that Jesus disregards the law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets. This was potentially damning information. To say that Jesus disagreed with the law and the prophets would be like spreading the rumor that a potential presidential candidate today doesn't agree with the U.S. Constitution or the Bill of Rights. The claim that Jesus wanted to get rid of the law and the prophets is not even remotely true. Jesus would have not been called rabbi or teacher if he had walked from village to village dissing the law and the prophets. Nevertheless, the rumor was spreading and it continues to spread even today. Especially the fake news about Jesus hating the law of Moses. Many of us have been taught that Jesus effectively ripped up the law, much like a recent event we witnessed at the conclusion of the State of the Union Address. But it's not true. Jesus wasn't trying to get rid of the law. In fact, the opposite is true. He was critical of those who misinterpreted and misused the law. I hate to burst our Christian bubble, but Jesus doubled down on the law of Moses. And yet the hearsay that he was against the law was spreading. So during his first recorded lengthy sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus set the record straight. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Jesus is very clear about his general attitude to the law, toward the law of Moses. He certainly tweaks it on occasion, such as challenging the laws against healing on the Sabbath. But that does not mean he wants to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Again, referring to our own sacred document, the Constitution, as an example, many Americans would like to edit or amend parts of it, to update it or to make it stronger but few Americans want to dismiss it altogether. This is probably how Jesus felt about the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets. He doesn't want to get rid of the law. He wants people to go deeper into their understanding and application of the law. He wants his followers to focus on the spirit of the law, more than the mere words of the law. He gives examples. One of them is this. You have heard that it was said, you shall not kill. But I say to you that you need to get underneath the act of murder and address the root causes of human conflict, such as unaddressed anger and insulting behavior. Seek reconciliation, says Jesus, before things get out of hand and you wind up in prison because you've killed someone in a fit of rage. Knowing that people were using hearsay to discredit Jesus, I love what he does here. He uses the language of hearsay to launch a teachable moment. You have heard that it was said, the it being something from the law of Moses. But I say to you, 
and then skillfully communicates the gist of some of the commandments. Don't murder, true, but first try not to get angry or hurl insults at one another. Don't commit adultery, true, but more importantly, be aware of the power of lust that leads to adultery. Jimmy Carter famously admitted to this in an interview many years ago with Playboy magazine. Give your ex-wife a certificate of divorce. True, but that won't erase the social consequences of being divorced. Man or woman, in a time and a place where divorce is almost equated with adultery, and by the way, adultery, like murder, was a capital offense. Don't swear falsely. True. But if you are a person of integrity, and your yeses always mean yes, and your no always means no, then you are less likely to have to swear than you are telling the truth. We didn't read the last two examples Jesus uses, but I thought I would include them as well. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to use you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to anyone and everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. Don't practice revenge, true. But if you really want to be the bigger person, then rather than getting even with the evildoer, give them more than what they took from you. This will put an end to the vicious cycle, an eye for an eye. Finally, Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your neighbor, true, but anyone can do that. How about loving your enemies? Do you see where Je Jesus is going here? He's taking the literal words of the law of Moses, and he's building on them. Don't just love your neighbors, love your enemies as well. He's not subtracting from the law, he's adding to the law. He's adding more meaning, more relevance, more wisdom more love, and more spirit to the law of Moses. Let's take that as a cue. Let's take the traditional teachings of the church and go beyond them. Let's build on our tradition and see if we can bring the kingdom of God into better focus. Amen.